transmission of our enhanced Cygnus vehicle. So it's very similar to the, the ones we launched the past three missions. The, in this particular mission, we've actually added more science capability. So we are actually carrying additional uh, powered payloads for, for NASA. So once they're loaded into the spacecraft, we actually have power that's supplied to them so they can run their coolers or their freezers. Uh, it keeps the uh, test samples uh, uh, fresh for the duration of while we're in Cygnus. And then up until we get to the ISS, where the crew will take them off the uh, spacecraft and, and start running the experiments. Well, we have some video now of what uh, we've done for the Cygnus module in the processing to get it ready to fly. So if we could go ahead and run the video, and uh, Frank, you can tell us what we're saying. Sure. So this is uh, when we uh, shipped the cargo module from its uh, facility in Torino, Italy, to the launch site. Uh, we actually shipped it directly from their factory to the launch site. It actually doesn't see the service module until they come together here. Uh, here we're unpacking it from its shipping container. Uh, once it's unpacked, it'll get placed on its uh, ground support equipment, sort of a holding mechanism. And we'll run some uh, initial checkout of the cargo module, make sure that it survived the shipping. Um, perfectly fine. And then once uh, once it's been checked out, uh, we'll begin the process of uh, loading the cargo. Here's uh, the service module arriving from our facility in Dulles, Virginia. After it's been it's completed all of its testing at our facility, we ship it to the launch site, uh, and we actually do some initial checkout of the service module on its own to make sure it survives shipping. Perfectly fine. Uh, here you can see our team is loading the cargo. The actual first piece of cargo we load is the Sapphire experiment, which is the third time we're flying that experiment for the NASA Glenn uh, Research Center. That's installed first. And then the remaining uh, cargo of what we call the initial load, which is roughly three quarters of the total cargo, uh, is loaded into the, uh, into the cargo module. Once that's complete, they'll transition the cargo module from horizontal uh, to a vertical configuration. Uh, we do that. Uh, so that we can prepare it to get mated to the service module. Uh, that's all done with the cargo module and the service module in a vertical configuration. So uh, once it's vertical, the team will attach it to its lifting fixture. Uh, it will eventually be uh, lifted off of its ground support equipment and then uh, shifted uh, over by crane. You can see the service module over to the right side of the video here we're lowering the cargo module onto the service module uh, there's mostly mechanical hookups that uh, occur uh, once that's done we'll check out the spacecraft at what we call the Cygnus level because it's now a completed spacecraft uh, we'll eventually bag it for transport to the fueling hall uh, here they're uh, lowering the completed spacecraft onto the K-MAG which is the um, uh, motorized transport vehicle so we'll move it over to the uh, uh, PHSF, which is where we load the hydrazine and the oxidizer onto the spacecraft. Uh, at that point, we will transition the spacecraft to be horizontal again, load the remaining cargo, uh, and then it will be encapsulated into the fairing, which has happened here. Uh, once we're inside the fairing, uh, we'll get back on the KMAG and we'll get rolled out to uh, the vertical integration facility where it'll get hoisted up, uh, up high and uh, mounted on top of the Atlas rocket. Minus 30 seconds. 
vehicle now going through the sound barrier. Max Q, body range continue to look very good at this point in flight. Vehicle hitting maximum diameter has Carl back right on schedule. Signatures look good. And in current altitude, max Q is customary. Range distance is five and a half miles. Current velocity is 1929 miles per hour. Range track shows good progress right down the middle of the corridor. Your engine performance continues to look very good at this point. View control is near nominal. Body rates look good. Steering has been enabled at this point. Body rates look good. The vehicle is now one half of its lift off weight. Two and a half minutes. Alpha flight steering has begun. Body rates look good. And we've fired the RCS pyro valve. That system is now pressurizing the flight levels. Signatures look good. Current altitude is 29 miles. Downrange distance 39 miles. Current velocity 4,325 miles per hour. Down has completed. Went up on Biko momentarily. And we have Biko being shut down. Looks good. We have stage separation. We have locks and fuel pre start. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL 10. Jettison has occurred. Looks like a clean step. Centaur steering has been enabled. Body rates look good. Data now coming in from the New Hampshire driving station. Miles downrange distance 317 miles. Current velocity 10,050 miles per hour. Still data coming in from the Cape as well. Centaur PU is requesting an oxidizer rich condition at this point. Chamber pressures, injector, uh, I'm sorry, box pump discharge and venturi are within band. Figures predicting system fine temperatures are warming towards the bottle temperature. Ready. And we have a Quick report of Atlas first stage performance. It was plus 106 pounds of PE or 0.33 sigma high. We have begun seeing our thermal conditioning ferns on the RCS. Now controlling near nominal fixture ratio also. Engine response looks good. Set MR. Centaur now steering and powering the rocket. Centaur is completing the dogleg maneuver. Body rates are now controlling down the middle. Dogleg is complete.
pressures, maximum discharge and fuel inventory all look good. Seven minutes into the flight now. Centaur currently is flying at an altitude of 191 miles. Downrange distance is 685 miles. Current velocity 10,538 miles per hour. First burn of Centaur is scheduled for 13 minutes and 42 seconds in duration. All systems continue to look very good at this point. Continuing to observe our thermal conditioning firings on the RCS. Signatures are normal. Centaur has completed the roll. Top and then it will coast for about three minutes. Mars controlling very near normal. Hydrogen systems are stable. Now it's stable. And we have spacecraft separation. Has separated from Centaur on the way to the space station. 27 minute and 27 second coast to our second burn, which will deorbit the upper stage. And uh, Cygnus will be rendezvousing with the space station.